All right. Welcome to the show, Christina. Thank Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad it worked out. We have Christina Rice (laughs) here, otherwise known as Christina the Channel. I am excited to have you here. Catherine Lamandry was just on the show and she raved about your events and everything you do as an entrepreneur and your healing work. And Mm. so I'm excited. I I feel like I want to call you the golf healer. Oh, the golf healer. Okay. Well, I I, I just have high hopes. I have, you know, let's just, uh, maybe this is even like a niche that maybe not you in particular, but someone out there is like, "I, I feel like I want to be the golf healer. Oh, it absolutely could be. I mean, I've worked with a couple of golfers here and here or there, you know? We are. Yeah. We are a certain breed. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's, it's, I work with mostly entrepreneurs. Uh And so like that athlete mind definitely comes with it. But I feel like I've had more and more golfers coming into my field recently. (laughs) So probably through Catherine, but I love it. Yeah. I love it. We have a great time. And I was actually, before we get into it, Mm -hmm. I was searching your stories today and you're, you're on a Star Wars Wars binge binge, right now, like trying to get them all done, watch them all. What's going on? Are you going on some big Star Wars trip or something? No, but I, well, I, this trip being in Scottsdale Uh was partially to do this event that we just hosted Uh Catherine was at and it was also to close up my time here because I lived here for a year Mm -hmm. and so I'm closing up the house and I had a bunch of friends coming to help me move things out and my one friend has never seen Star Wars and we were talking about it the other night at dinner with with Catherine and yeah all the girls and so when I found out that she hadn't seen Star Wars we were like we need to watch at least the first six (laughs) before you leave so we're just trying to fit it all in. Do you think you'll fit it all in? Yeah, we will. We have three later. We'll, we'll you know, <laughs> I like, I do enjoy a Star Wars, Star Wars movie. I'm yeah. not a huge, ginormous fan. Like there uh-huh. are some out there, but, and, and I can tend to maybe fall asleep in the middle just for like a good five, eight minutes, you know, get That's a little, fine. get a little you nap. And, you don't miss that much. Yes. Just, there's so much fighting. You don't miss that much. Yeah. But I do enjoy them. Yeah. So are you, did, did you grow up uh, watching Star Wars? No, I'm and, not like a, I'm not a hardcore. I actually, I actually didn't. I'm a big Disney person for sure. Okay. I'm, I'm a bigger Harry Potter person. Catherine uh-huh. and I are like the same yeah. like that. But I I didn't watch Star Wars until I was older, but it is so spiritual. It explains energy and telepathy and those kinds of concepts, I think, in a really fun way. And yeah. so my friend who is staying with me is also a healer. And so I told her you would love this. Yeah. So yeah, I love well, it. Well, that's so much adult. fun. I yeah. love a good marathon Same. binge session. Same. So, <laughs> okay. Well, when Catherine brought your name up and what you practice and what you do, what struck me the most is I'm like in a weird, my relationship with golf is is definitely off. Mm. Um, I fell in love with the sport very quick and it quickly became like my main hobby, my main goal to improve at. And I ended up building a business around it. And it's just kind of been like my, you know, other than my family, my entire life, golf recreationally and golf business. And, you know, I feel like I hit a wall and golf has become not as much fun anymore. And, um, you know, it's my drive to become better, mm-hmm. which is, I really feel like how I grew my following. Cause I would share my journey on what I was working on and, and how consistent I was being and, and, you know, just sharing my love for the game and wanting my love for really trying to get better and better and better and accomplish my goals. And it's just like, I I just, I don't, I don't know if I have it in me, at least right now. And there's definitely a part of me that feels guilty about that. Mm -hmm. And it's just spreading through my whole attitude about business and the game and everything. And, you know, it's just a weird, it's a weird spot. Yeah. You know, if if you were to describe that, is it that you're bored or that you're just, you're over it or like what, what is, or you feel like you can't get any better. Like you feel like you're just like, this is, I, I feel like the momentum is yeah. kind of dull. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say I'm bored cause I do some really amazing things. I meet some amazing people, yeah. you know, and it definitely is peaks and valleys. You know, mm-hmm. we have these huge events, you know, you would probably relate to this huge events a couple times a year. Yeah. So when you come off of those events, it's kind of like a little bit of a lull mm-hmm. and, until you start gearing up for the next one. And I get to visit some amazing places through golf and and this job. So it's not boring, but I worry that if I am not 
consistently trying to improve my game myself Mm -hmm. and sharing about it that I don't know. It's just, I, I don't know if I have that energy anymore. I'm not sure. Well, it's a tricky thing because especially with, you know, the athlete mindset, like it's your identity Mm -hmm. uh, and our identity shifts and changes over time. And also life really isn't meant to just always be like this. And we're conditioned to think that, right? A lot of what allows us to do that is when we're in earlier stages, there is newness Mm -hmm. built into the situation. Mm -hmm. And the further you get along the journey where you reach mastery, it'll feel like a plateau because newness isn't necessarily integrated into the container of whatever you're doing, unless you're going out of your way to make it new again. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And so a lot of times you'll, you'll feel like that because there's not something new that's getting plugged into the container of what it is. It's exciting you or expanding Mm you. Um, and I think, I mean, a lot of people can, can relate to what you're saying. And so what that is, is usually expanding the circle, right? Giving new stimuli to respond to. Like I find for me, that helps me the most, like really looking at other industries inspires me to bring new things into my business because I will get bored as well. But like you have the personality type that's like, what's a new thing I can conquer, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then when it feels like you've kind of done it, it does get boring. But the other piece of that is that I think it's interesting is our relationship with peace and our relationship with stillness. And I find for the, for the athlete, for the entrepreneur, for that type A person, for that overachiever, we say we want to create these things because we want freedom. We want liberation, we want happiness. We say we want peace, but most people don't actually want it or they don't know how to relate to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when we get to a space of peacefulness or things are, things are just good, it's, well, what's, what's next, you know? And so there's also that relationship with what happens when in life we're in this state of just things are good. And as humans, we like to create situations to, that's, that are either dramatic in terms of n- like negative drama or dramatic in terms of, I need to grow. I need to change. I need to transform. Like we have this drive to always be changing. We're, we're energy. Everything is energy. Energy mm-hmm. is constantly in motion. It's not normal for energy to stand still. Right. And so as humans, we always like to give our ourselves something to do to overcome, to learn, you know, so for, again, for some people that can be kind of like negative stuff, people who have a positive mindset, they'll use that to, to create more, to grow, to learn new skills. Um, and so I think understanding that about, you know, our nature is really helpful to get to know ourselves in those periods of of stillness or peace as well. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes. And, and as you're saying, I'm trying to relate this to maybe the listener listening also, when you were talking about how in the beginning or early stages of your life, Mm -hmm. you know, you're experiencing things new for the first, like for the first time more frequently, or I'm thinking about when we start to golf, you see progression. I don't want to say at a rapid pace, but at a steady incline for a while. Until you come to a plateau, and that could be two, five, 10, 15 years to where you kind of just start being around, I'm going to say handicap index, same level. Um, I, I think that the listener really could relate to that's where you get that the golf bug, and yeah. it's just, you know, you just keep getting better and you experience new things and you play in new tournaments and you meet new friends, and, mm-hmm. and then you kind of settle in. Well, I think it's like interesting to tune into what are we really looking for? You know, if you really tune into, and that not, might not be something that people can answer right off the bat, usually not of what do you really, what are you really looking for? Do you know what that is? Like through, through that pursuit of pinnacle golf? Like me yeah. asking me, what am I really looking for? Um, and I'm, I'm thinking it from a business end. Are you thinking more of a macro just golf? I mean, it can be whatever your answer is. Yeah. I mean, I've always been driven by significance and mm-hmm. like being like my words of affirmation. That's my love language. Yeah. So, um, I'm always wanting to do things better and accomplish things and set a goal and make mm-hmm. them. So it, that my whole energy around golf has just been to get better and to build a business and have better events each year and do better and do better and do better. And so I think right now 
that's why I'm just like, yeah, but that's the thing is, but what does that mean to just get better? Yeah. Right. And so a lot of times people will feel this way when really it's that our vision isn't big enough. Our vision isn't expanded enough. And by that it has to be a specific vision. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is what happens when you, when you go into an industry, right. And especially when the industry becomes a big part of your identity and you keep diving into it, it starts to feel smaller. Like it's, it does kind of start to feel smaller. Yes. And like we're, if, you know, where your energy is, it really, it feels like you got to the top of the building and Mm -hmm. it's like, well, where do I go? And what wants to happen is this expansion around like, like pulling in new ideas. That's real innovation, Mm -hmm. right? Because the way that you're relating to it, like I can feel like, it's like, I can't pick up where you're going next. Yeah. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. do you know where you're going next? No. Yeah. Right. (laughs) And so that's where, you know, golf is interesting because, you know, one of the reasons why it is so powerful is that community piece. Yes. Right. You meet amazing people, you make great friends. It's like lifelong friendships. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful thing. And one of the most important pieces of just our health Mm -hmm. as humans. Right. And connecting with people who have shared hobbies and things like that. But that can also be a block because it keeps the circle comfortable, right? And Mm -hmm. really where we learn our most is through relationships. It's how Mm -hmm. we're built as humans. And so again, if you're not getting new stimuli, right, uh, you will get bored. I will say, you know, I have been podcasting for 10 years Mm -hmm. and my business has been in kind of different industries. First, it was all health and wellness. And then I went focused in on business for a while and now it's spirituality. Mm-hmm. And part of that was me just transforming as a person and kind of getting to the root of what I thought really mattered and what was creating the most transformation. Part of that was me getting bored. You know, I'm a really fast mover mm-hmm. and it got to the place I wanted to go. And I realized I had to drive for more. And so I, I did have to kind of expand that that vision, if that makes sense. Yes. And I think about with podcasting, I've gone through lulls where I'm like, there's no one else I want to interview, you know, because I'm in my industry and I'm like, I've interviewed every, like with health and wellness, I'm like every single person that I can think of, you know, has been on the show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, you know, I'm 400 episodes deep and I'm like, I, it's, you know, not to be rude to people, but I'm like, I just, there's no one else that's exciting (laughs) me anymore because no one else is saying anything new or different. Yeah. 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 So then I had to start to look at it. at, in terms of like, well, what's going to excite me? And I realized what was exciting me was learning. Mm-hmm. That was the core of all of it. Yes. And I was bored because I wasn't learning anymore. Yes. And so I started to go to other industries, right? And I realized that I can talk to anybody and I'm going to find a common thread. Yeah. I could sit down with anybody. I'm going to find a reason why we're having that conversation. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be more interesting because they're going to bring something to the table that I hadn't thought of before. And I was mm-hmm. just so sick of people talking about the same stuff, yes. right? Uh-huh. It was just a different version of the same thing. And that's where I realized, wow, I can get really creative with this, where I have this whole audience of people who are really deep into their their health journey and their healing and their wellness and biohacking. And I can actually expand that conversation. We're also talking about financial health. We're talking mm-hmm. about spiritual health. And that just then opens open the doors if I can have anybody on my show, mm-hmm. right? And when I did that, then I realized, wow, I can expand my vision into something so much bigger than just helping people heal their bodies. You know, that's like one example of how it transformed. And it just feels like for you right now, like there's this door that wants to be open and it's like, it's not just golf. It's if you're, if you're coming from golf, like what other industries, what, what other people, what other communities also want to be a part of that? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And (laughs) I mean, it was, it was literally two episodes ago because I took a summer, this summer where I was traveling a bunch and yeah. I wasn't releasing a lot of new episodes. And so I finally get back in the valley and I get back in my normal studio, try to get back in my pace. Mm-hmm. And the first um, interview or show I did was with Alex Anderson. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to keep going with podcast episodes. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't. I'm not sure what's next, yeah. you know, kind of thing, but cause it just, there's the drive is missing, Yeah. but I've always considered myself the student yeah. in this, on this podcast. Like I am forever the student in golf. And when I have, you know, the, um, experts on, like I'm there learning as 
just like my listener is. Mm -hmm. So it makes so much sense that it's like, I just feel like I'm not learning as much anymore. Yeah. You and know? you have to be excited. And that's yes. the thing for me. I know. And people comment this. They're like, mm -hmm. I got it. I was interested because Christina was so interested. Yes. And so I learned to focus on just whoever I'm interested in talking to. Mm -hmm. My audience is going to feel that magnetism and they're going to be curious too. Like for you, the primary demographic, these are people who golf, right? Yes. But that's not the only thing that they do in their lives. Right. Yeah. They're, they're multifaceted, multidimensional people that mm -hmm. have all kinds of interests. And the thing is, we might come together with people on one thing like, you know, we golf and people are drawn to you, not just because of golf. They could listen to other people about golf. They're drawn to you because of your frequency, because of your energy. And there's mm -hmm. so many things that go into that that energy, that frequency, yeah. that, that it's not just golf. So that might be the surface level. Hey, that's why we came together. But I'm sure you know this in your own life, the people that you do connect with in the golf community, there are other things you have in common mm -hmm. and that's not coincidence. Yes. That's law of attraction. Absolutely. Right? That's, that's how we connect with people. And so when we understand that, you know, we're all multifaceted, you can have a conversation with anybody you're interested in on this show and it might seem like it's not connected for you and everybody listening will realize how it's connected for them. Yeah. And those are some of my, my top episodes, I would say things that seem so out there, but I'm, I'm going through a niche thing. And so I'll bring somebody on and everybody in my audience will also be going through that niche thing because there's a much deeper resonance than just if it's spirituality or manifestation, there's something else deeper going on. And that's true for you too. But you know, when you're, you are a creative we wouldn't mm -hmm. be here if you weren't a creative. Mm -hmm. And when we think about creativity, like creation, there's an energy of, you know, I'm taking something and transforming it into something else, or I'm building something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we think we're doing creative work and we're really just doing logical analytical work, you know? And I know for me, I, I get bored with my own business if it's just, you know, here's my to-do list. I find a guest, I show up. If there's nothing new that I'm creating, like that's a frequency. I'm creating something, yes. right? Mm -hmm. it, and it has that, that energy of new. Yeah. And so we can think we're being creative and you've got to realize, oh no, I'm actually not. I'm just kind of like doing the same thing I've always done. Mm -hmm. And that's the key because if you can tap into what actually makes you creative, this is a new thing. It's a new conversation. It's a, it's a new set. It's a new studio. It's a new vibe I'm bringing a new intro style. That's, that's where we feel that, that juice that mm -hmm. like getting lit up. Have you ever yeah. had a human design read? A human design? A human design. Yeah. It's no. a chart. No. Tell I feel me like about you it. Would, you would love it. So human design is a combination of a few different systems like astrology, the chakra systems, mm -hmm. so there's like five different systems brought together and it, there's a chart, right, based off your birth time. And it's one of my favorite systems because it's so actionable and it shows you how your energetic circuitry runs, essentially. And it shows you how to make very aligned decisions for yourself, like how your unique intuition shows up, your unique energy flow. And there's something to, you know, I have, I'm a sacral responder is what it's called in human design. And what that means is my body lights up when I'm doing the right thing for me, the correct thing for me. And I get an energy drain when I'm doing the wrong thing for yes. me. Yes. And you seem like you would probably be a sacral person, honestly, right? It's like you won't have energy. Yes. Uh, the sacral is life force. It's, it's your sacral chakra, your life force energy moving through you. And so when we're out of alignment or we're saying yes to something that our bodies want to say no to, our intuition wants to say no to, we'll get exhausted, we'll get drained. Mm -hmm. And so then it's looking at your life and seeing, you know, where's the thing that either I'm saying yes to that you should say no to, or is everything just a neutral and my body's waiting for something to respond to? Yep. You, you know that, you know that physical, like I, I'm leaning in or I'm contracting, mm -hmm. I'm excited or I'm tired. I mean, you probably get this. I know for me, I can be so exhausted. And then someone is like, Hey, do you want to do that thing? I'm like, yes, I'm yes. ready. You know, I'm like, I have endless uh -huh. energy when it's the right thing. And so I, now that once I learned that with my human design, I paid extra attention to my physical energy levels and realizing it's not just as simple as did I get enough sleep? Because there's so many times I, yeah. I did not have enough sleep and I have so much energy. Or you like ate the wrong thing the yeah. day before. Yeah. And not that those aren't real things, right? Yeah. That goes on too, but there's a bigger thing at play. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why I love energy work because you realize that there's there's so much else that's even controlling that digestion. You know, for me, I got into health and wellness because I had really severe gut issues for a long time that I almost died from. And 
I realized that my digestive issues were all just because I wasn't digesting life and I didn't have yes things in my field. Mm. And so I was like devoid of life force energy and my whole body started shutting down. And I realized that so much of my physical digestive issues and all these food intolerances and all these gut issues and me feeling tired after certain foods, when I shifted things just energetically and in my life, all of that went away. Mm -hmm. Right. So something so much bigger going on, but I think, you know, for you, it's what, what is creative for you? Like, what's the new thing you're diving into? Mm -hmm. I mean, that could be expanding the show in a new way that you haven't thought about before, mm -hmm. because it does feel like with this show, it's like, it can, there's, there's new levels you could play at. That would be really fun for you. Yeah. Um, that would be really fun for you. There's books to be written. There's things like that, that mm -hmm. are like wanting you to say yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that might mean some of the time is spent a little bit differently in ways that, that you're used to. Does that make sense? It's expanding your identity past however you identify as a golfer. Yeah. Or expanding how I identified before. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. It's like when that's so much your identity, you're scared to leave it. Yeah. At least that's how yeah. I feel like, yeah. like this is how this whole thing was built. A, B, and C, and now I just kind of wanted to do D, E, and F, whatever mm -hmm. that is. I don't mm -hmm. know. So what's wrong with that? It's, um, I feel like there's a little bit of shame in it, mm. like you're giving up. I don't think you're giving up at all. It's like graduating from high school. You get to go to college. <laughs> so true. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You're, if you think about it, like closing a chapter where it's like, I'm just done and I'm leaving it behind. I mean, I guess you could perceive that in a lot of different mm -hmm. ways, but it's all stepping stones in life. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you realize that, right? One thing leads to the next. And I just don't think it makes any sense for us to think that we're doing the same things our whole lives at all. No. And when you say it like that, like, obviously. Yeah. Right. So, so and, and that's, that's the thing that people don't always like to hear but again, when you're somebody that's driven to grow and learn and expand and understand all of yourself and like live, right, you're going to go through different chapters. And I always think I'm like, if you have the same exact friends with no, no changes or no expansion your whole life, you have not grown. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a good thing. Sorry. Yeah. I know people are comfortable. No, agreed. Right. But it's mm -hmm. like, you've got to keep expanding your circle because new people teach you different things. Mm -hmm. And if people who have the same friends their whole lives, it's an indication they haven't grown, right? They're just comfortable. And so it's same with our careers and different iterations of our careers. But I don't know. I mean, I think about myself and if I had stayed with the first industry I was like specializing in, I would be so unhappy. My whole body would be shutting down. Like your mm -hmm. intuition is talking to you. Yes. Life is talking to you. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the thing is that if you're, if you're ready to keep going, to go to college, so to speak, mm -hmm. all of the people who love you and resonate with you are also ready simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I shifted out of the health and wellness space and into spirituality, it was like a hard, it's like a hard pivot. And at the time I was like, I do not want to talk about health anymore. I had so much ish around it. I don't mm -hmm. feel that way anymore. But at the time I was like, I cannot do this anymore. And it was pretty much a hard overnight. I was like, I'm just talking about psychic stuff. <laughs> like and, overnight. Yeah. You're over, like pretty much I'm, overnight. I changed yeah. my entire brand. I told everybody I did not do a slow pivot. And I was shocked at how many people said to me, I'm so glad you did this. I was getting so bored too. Yeah. And I brought thousands and thousands of people with me on that journey. Mm -hmm. Right. And I continue to, and I I've learned a lot, just not through that, but a lot, a lot of times in my career and in my life that's happened. And I realize if I'm ready to go, so is everybody else. And, and so someone has to be the brave one to go, to go first. Yeah. But I think about, I mean, as a podcast listener as well, I get bored of shows. No, me too. Right. I get bored of shit, but I love the person. Yes. I love the, And I'm like, Oh, I really want to listen to that, but they just keep having the same conversation. And yeah, I know. Right. This is hard. Right. This is hard it, to listen it, it, to people, it's so right. People care about you and your personality. Yeah. yeah. Right. And there, there's a lot to you and they're probably ready to grow too. Mm -hmm. I mean, after however many episodes you've done, it's been a lot. Yeah. They probably are like, okay, okay. great. What's next? Yeah. And let's keep adding to it. And mm -hmm. it doesn't have to mean leaving. It doesn't have to mean leaving that behind. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Right? Yeah. I, I mean, agree. that's a fun thing for you. 
But all, and then, you know, we have to get into when we make our passion, our work, like it's complicated. Yeah. That, that's the reality of yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll say it. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It does get more complicated. Do you, do you feel like that's you too? Though? Yeah. And yeah. I, I have to really learn to manage that. You know, for me with spirituality, there were years where it was just my, my private secret, sacred thing within myself. And it became so much of what I was thinking about doing. It was all I cared about. I was like, of course, I'm going to make this my business, but then turn into work. And I started to get tired of it. I didn't want to think about it anymore. And I had to realize my boundaries and carving out my own space where it was really just, I'm doing this for myself Mm -hmm. and being creative with it. For me, I had realized that all of my spiritual time had turned into things that were related to my business. And I had kind of lost my own, like I had turned everything into my business. I mean, even just with social media and podcasting and all that, everything I did, I was taking a picture of, I was doing a video and I was just like, I have nothing for me. Yeah. And I needed something for me. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I had to create boundaries for myself I mean, I've totally changed the way I use social media and even within my own, just like my time, my time management, my own spiritual practice. I had to bring a lot of things back in that are just for me. Nobody needs to know about, nobody Mm -hmm. needs to hear about. And that balanced it out for me, Mm -hmm. for sure. I wonder through your transitions of, it seems like a silly word, job, careers, who were you most inspired by and why? Like... Oh, Who man. were you looking at? Like, <sighs> you know, I, I think the point was I wasn't looking at anybody. Yeah. I think if I was looking at anybody, I would have gotten off track. And mm-hmm. one of the things I've learned at the beginning, I was just so in my own lane, following my intuition and it worked so well. And then I realized, you know, I should get business coaches. I should learn. I get, should get some consultants, you know, I have a lot more money. And so I'm bringing people on and bringing experts on. I'm hiring more people. And I felt like the more I did that, the more I went to shit. Mm-hmm. Can I swear? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Please. Okay. So, yeah. And I was, you know, I'm the first person to know I don't know everything. And so I'm like, great, I'll hire the expert. This person has 30 years of experience. Yeah. This it, this person has built something in this arena that I, I, would, I would love, you know, in different aspects of my business. And so I would work with those coaches. And I got a lot of great mentorship, I think, personally, I think business wise, I've, I've learned that my intuition always knows best. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of what threw me off track was when I was guided to look at other people because Mm -hmm. I'm a different person. And what always works for me is if I'm excited, if I'm lit up, if it, there's just, there's alignment, like there's a frequency to it, you know, and there's this inner thing in me when I'm not overthinking it, I know exactly what to do. And that's always when everything flows. And anytime Mm -hmm. in my career, I have been too logical. I have overthought it. I have brought in experts and had them make some decisions. I've offhanded things a little bit too much in terms of executive decisions. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. My whole business is based off of energy. It's based off of attraction, you know? And so anything that kind of dulls the frequency of it, that could be, I mean, we just had this issue come up with like a website, you know? And so handed off the website to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not my vibe. Like, this isn't me. It has to feel like me Mm -hmm. or even things with, you know, podcasting studios. I'll get in there and I know I'm a pain in the ass, but I'm like, no, like it's like little things that I can tell are just wrong. Yeah. And it makes a, it makes a huge difference. Yes. Yeah. And I have so much proof of that in my business. And so now I've just learned, you know, just to trust myself. But I think and it hasn't been like one person that I've looked to or like a couple. It's been a lot of different people throughout the way. Different mentors, different friends, different colleagues who all give me a, something I'm learning from. But I think the whole point is. I don't want to create something I've seen created before Mm -hmm. and it wouldn't make sense for me to try and do it the way that other people have done it before. And when you're feeling, and when I say when I'm like, when Mm -hmm. we are feeling friction and like a sense of spiral and Mm -hmm. just being stuck, is it as easy as stepping back and just being still for a while? Like, just I mean, just let the noises quiet down and it will come to you what yes. your next move is. A hundred percent. Like for me, for instance, is it just about just 
just letting it go and then it will come to me and then it will be like, yeah. you'll, I'll, you'll know. Whenever we're, we're trying really hard, yes. we have resistance, right? And so energy can't move. Mm-hmm. And so manifestation is about sending a request mm-hmm. <laughs> to the field around you mm-hmm. and allowing the universe to deliver it to you, right? And that delivery can come through life delivering something to you, an opportunity deliver, coming to you. It can be your own intuition. And so that can be an interest and that might seem completely unrelated, Mm -hmm. right? So you might be trying to solve this big business problem, for example, and you keep getting this intuitive nudge. I'm trying to think of, I mean, it could be watch Star Wars for six days, Yes, you know, that kind of thing happens to me all the time. And it seems totally unrelated. You're like, I don't, I don't have time to watch Star Wars. Right. I mean, like I should be working the last two days, but we're watching Star Wars. (laughs) So, because that has, that was strong. It kept coming up. It came up at dinner. My friend Kelly goes, I've never watched it. And I'm thinking, you got to watch it. And then we went out to, we went to the grocery store after, and we saw like 10 signs about Star Wars. Like the license plates in front of us are saying Yoda and the Star Wars. It was, I was like, okay, clearly the universe wants me to watch Star Uh Wars. So we're prioritizing it. And as I'm watching it, I'm getting a lot of creative inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, okay, I needed that. I needed that juice, right? Or sometimes you watch a movie and there's a line in the movie where you're like, that is the answer I needed, Mm -hmm. right? Or it's, I don't know, you get invited to a random event that you never usually go to, but there's a thing in you that's like, huh, maybe that's interesting. Or yeah, Mm -hmm. I want to go. And you go and you meet somebody who who gives you an opportunity or gives you a really good idea, Mm -hmm. right? When we're feeling stuck, the next piece is going to be something that we, it's not already in our field of awareness. Okay. And what happens is people are trying to figure it out in their brains, which is based on what you've, we already know, right? It's, it's based on it's already in your current field of awareness in some way. If you don't have the solution already, then it's not something that's already in the field of awareness. So you have to wait for something new to come in. Yeah. And that's very helpful just to realize if I'm not sure right now, I haven't bumped up against it. Like it hasn't come to me yet. So I just mm. need to wait for it to come to me. Cause if it had, you would, you would know. Yes. Right. And then you talk to people and you get this ping of like, okay, that's the clue right? You're just following those intuitive clues and those nudges, which could get delivered through anyone, through anything, a movie, a song, a person, somebody at the grocery store, somebody down the hall, you know, you never know. Mm -hmm. And so you're just allowing life to deliver that to you. But that can only happen if we are open, if we're open to the new experiences. And so a lot of times people will feel like I'm just stuck and nothing's coming to me. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I'm on my routine every single day. You've got to be able to get out of your routine. Yeah. Break it. Yeah. Right. So even like, you know, I'm sure through this conversation, you're going to have some pings Mm -hmm. like, okay, that was a clue Mm -hmm. for me. And how did this, I mean, this happened like randomly, right? I mean, I wasn't supposed to have any time. This just came up two days ago. So random. Right. And I was supposed to have a, I have like, I've had a lot of appointments. I was supposed to have a dentist appointment right now. And then they canceled like right before I heard about this yes. and I was like, sure. I get, it just opened my 4 PM opened up. No, <laughs> right? That is kind of crazy. So yes. That's how the universe works. And you just respond before you understand why, mm-hmm. why you're drawn there or why it's coming in. Yeah. And it gets delivered to you. Yeah. And again, trying to relate it to myself. I feel like there are times where I am, well, I'll say when I'm happiest, super high energy, like, getting a lot done because it's like easy because it's like I'm drawn to Mm. it just like you were saying earlier and like the energy's there the excitement's there the passion's there and then when it's not like that there is this amount of guilt like I'm not doing all that I can do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. but now as you're explaining this to me it's like it's just not serving yeah of some sort you know it's not why do you think it's guilt because again, I've always been like significance production. Like, yeah. like I am worthy if I am mm-hmm. giving this amount of production, yeah. you know, like doing, checking all the boxes, yeah. then I've had a good day. Mm. So that's how like yeah. my mentality goes. And granted, I can sit back and watch Star Wars all day, but does there a load of guilt come on me when I do those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they don't because I'm just utterly exhausted, but yeah, I, I totally get it. I was always like that too. I grew up learning that and it's like type A overachiever, Mm -hmm. like drove myself into the ground. Um, and I'm grateful that happened at a really young age for me. Mm -hmm. 
I did a lot of work to heal that. And part of that was me realizing that being productive isn't just doing the things that I'm writing on my to-do list. Like being productive is allowing divine inspiration to flow through me. Mm -hmm. Being productive is, is resting because when you rest and you take your mind off of it, that's when it drops in. Yeah. Right. And so I used to feel guilty anytime I would lay on the couch and, you know, binge yeah. watch whatever yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> And then I realized that every time I do that, every time I go on a vacation, every time I lounge around and read a book or whatever, I am able to produce so much more. Like it's productive and it's fueling me. It's giving me inspiration. There's never a time when I, in my existence, that I feel like it's not productive. It's a lot of my most productive time, I mean, I'm an energy healer. Half my day is meditating. Yeah. And it's super productive. Mm -hmm. I mean, what happens, I used to, get up and just go to work. And I was trying to think my way through everything. And I get up and I'm meditating for hours. And in my meditation, I, I know exactly what I'm doing. And I finish all my work in 45 minutes. Like, so it's way more productive. Yeah. Right. And what else am I producing at that time? I'm, I'm producing wellness. I'm healing my body. I'm producing peace. Like I, you're always productive with something, mm -hmm. right? Like rest is productive. Mm -hmm. And so I think for me realizing that I started to add in all of the other real things on my to-do list, like on my to-do list, I have lay for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that is something on my to-do list. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that definitely helped me a lot is realizing, you know, it's like meditation was on my to-do list. Read my book is on my to-do list. Mm -hmm. And I realized there's not anything I'm doing I mean, as humans, we're always being productive. It's just about shifting your your definition of that, I think. Christina, thank you for being on. <laughs> Thanks I, for having I me. I want to go through what your business is about as far as having, like, what does it mean to be a customer of yours, yeah. to be a client of yours? Yeah. Like, how can people reach you? What does it look like? Who, you know, like, yeah. tell us all the things. For sure. So... My business kind of has two sides. One side is I train other energy healers. So if people want to learn to do energy healing on themselves or to send it to other people, I train people in that. Uh, but the main part of my business is there's two ways to work with me. I do private readings, um, so private energy healing or private just intuitive readings. And then I also have a membership. It's called Next Level You, and that's where I put most of my resources. So guided meditations, guided energy work, just to have that like dose of goodness mm -hmm. every day, just to make it really easy for people. So, you know, a lot of the, the experience for a lot of people that come to me, again, it's like the type A overachiever, a lot of entrepreneurs, athletes, people like that, who are so like, they, they need to lay down, right? <laughs> um, and energy work is, is usually core in their toolkit to their well being because you're dealing with a lot of stress and people can do all kinds of mindset stuff or, but it's, it's held in your energy body and it's so much easier than therapy because you don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. just lay there, mm -hmm. right? So it doesn't feel like you have to do more. Yeah. And so that's why people love it. And so you know, in my membership, I do, it's a ton of guided energy work. So you can just like lay there and do that yourself. Or if people want to book a reading with me, everything's at christinathechannel.com. And that's my handle everywhere. And tell me about the event you just had. Yeah, we just had a, an amazing two day event. Um, the first day was really, it was reading the field essentially. So everybody kind of got live readings and you realize how everybody who shows up is connected. It's really cool to see that. We talked a lot about purpose. Um, we talked a lot about healing, like healing the body mm -hmm. and again, a lot of like type A overachievers and kind of getting to the bottom of energetically why they're trying things really hard and mm -hmm. it's just not working, like getting yeah. out of that stuckness and how to find, how to find the right different paradigm to flow in. And then the second day, um, we did more energy work and um, answer more questions. So it's just like a nice sacred space for women to come together. And I love to do live events every couple months and give people that, that in-person experience because yeah. everything I do is virtual. So yeah, it was, it was beautiful. It was great. What do you get out of those live events? Cause I know how much work they yeah. are and how much energy it takes and, and you know, it's two days of nonstop, but then there's also all the days prior that you're planning it and yeah. filling it and Oh, I get so much out of it. I mean, I get a ton of inspiration out of it from, from the people I'm chatting with. Like mm -hmm. my clients are my biggest inspiration. I would say I learned so much from them too. Mm -hmm. 
and what they're sharing. And I learn from what I'm channeling from them because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm reading a field, you know, mm-hmm. so I'm always learning. But honestly, I just get such a high from like that level of transformation, like really seeing people come in and in one day they're a completely different person and they have all these big life like stuckness and stressors and even like physical health issues. And for them to leave that day and be healed, be fixed, be clear. It is, there's nothing like it. It is, it is my favorite part of what I do. Like I get such a high off of it. Uh, and I just want nothing more than to help people because I, I mean, that's what drives me. I mean, I know what it feels like to be stuck, to be struggling, to feel like no one can help you. I, I've gone through so much, like in my life, I, I was suicidal. I almost died from a lot of different chronic illnesses and I just felt like nobody could help me. Mm -hmm. And I just have like dedicated my life to making, I, I want to make sure that anybody in my field doesn't feel like that. Yeah. So I, there's just no, there's just no feeling like it, honestly, watching people heal in whatever way that means. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've helped me a lot today and I appreciate you being here. And like you said, this, this all happened for a reason and especially just the listener listening, I'm sure they're getting out of it what they needed to. And, um, I appreciate you. Thank Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love this conversation. Everything that you need to know to get in touch with Christina is in the show notes. So check them out and, um, I wish you all the best. I mean, I'm sure maybe we'll have you on again in the future. We'd love to. When, when maybe the pivot's been made and we can all come to back together as a full circle. Oh, yeah. Happy to. We'd love it. Thanks, Christina. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.